So that's the first concern, which is not good. I'm not happy with that at all. And I wouldn't be crossing the oceans with this. I am half tempted to even pull that out. We were leaving the boat this morning. Uh, I fell down the stairs. <laughs> okay, we are going to go and get an x-ray of my foot. We're just going to rule out that it's some broken, nothing's broken. That's We're an Australian family that set off on an adventure of a lifetime. We hope these little videos make you smile and inspire you to chase your dreams. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. I've removed our compass. I've just gone to sort of inspect down in here, which is our steering. It is quite a bit of play in there. I'm just pulling through all the old sea talk cables because we're running NEMA 2000 now. Some of it I will be tying in together, but they're all down rubbing against the side of the chain, which I don't like for starters. Just a big mess. There's joins and breaks and cuts and it's just... When you open up a can of worms. I do have the cables, I put them on the boat just in case we did break a cable. So that's the forward and reverse cables and the acceleration cables. So I do have two of those and I do have a rebuild kit for this. I don't have the cable and chain. I'm just wondering how far to dig into this. Obviously we want to get back in the water, but this is, and I have seen in the past, something that a lot of people overlook. Your chain and wire could probably be like your rigging. You know, every 10 years you'd probably want to service it if you want to have a trouble-free run. Or if you don't mind losing your steering and hopping on a rudder, on the emergency rudder, well, we've done that before. I think what I will do is, it is a real pain in the bum, but I'm probably going to loosen the um, wire on the quadrant, which is at the back of the boat, which is what steers the boat. That's what the wire actually pulls backward and forward to turn the boat. So I may loosen that, which will allow me to lift the chain up and I can service and inspect all this. So I've actually, in the last 10 years, had both of those snap on me. So hence why I put them on the boat, even though I haven't installed them. When we first got the boat, I put them on. When we got our first boat, we lost our forward and reverse control cable. So two control cables like this. One is just your revs and one is a forward and reverse. We lost that on Katapa 1. And also, just before we left Indonesia, we also lost our steering cable. Been hit by 40 plus knots of wind. I don't know if this is going to work. I don't know what's damaged. I do know we've broken something on lost steering. Um, we got hit with high winds. A lot of load went onto it and our steering cable snapped and it is a time-consuming, tedious, little costly job, but it is a very important one. See how far we get here. I didn't even really expect to go too far into this. I've just been chasing wires all morning, all these old Sea Talk wires, and trying to clear out the boat of all the old crap. It just makes running new wires and troubleshooting so much easier. I was just intending to move a few wires, but I didn't like what I found, so I'm going a little bit further. So anyway, I didn't like these here because originally the autopilot was here and you'd have to stick your hand through the wheel and the wheel had turned, so to me, that's just gone. This one here, the same deal, it's gone. And all these wires that run down along inside here, there's a chain and a wire cable, they're all gone. We don't really want that. So there is still three more cables there and I'm gonna re-divert them because to me it just makes sense not to have wires next to a push-pull system of uh, chain and cable rubbing alongside them. Instrument wise at the moment, we're just gonna run with depth, wind and our autopilot and our head unit and that's pretty much it for the system. Everything else that we had, even all that stuff up there, it's all obsolete. Uh, it's all three generations old. There was like our unit we put in, a unit before that, and a unit before that. I think Raymarine's first system. But definitely before we do a Pacific Crossing, the new chain and wire will go on. While I do have it open, I am going to redo. Um, this is really loose and wobbly. So there's little needle bearings in here. There's a brake, which is fine. I won't replace that, but I'll replace all the bearings and grease it all up. I did actually have a pedestal kit. I thought it was a nice little lad anchor job, but we're on the hard stand and we're 
getting through all the little jobs here. Pretty much there's two sets of needle bearings and some washers and that tidies that whole section up and lubricate all that. I've got these here. These two little cables that you can't quite see. I'm gonna service this. There's a couple of things in my road, which is these wires. I'm gonna leave them there for the moment. I'm actually gonna redirect all these wires up into here. But just for now, so I can get all this apart. You don't need a lot of tools to do this, but what you do need is a rag. And the reason you need a rag is because all this drops down into the engine bay. So there's little pieces and little pins and everything that are gonna come apart here. And uh, I don't wanna drop any. So I'm gonna jam a rag underneath as I work. I'm not gonna have the best access here because I've undone at the quadrant I've undone the um, attachments for the wire to the quadrant but it's probably only giving me a foot or so so I'll just sort of lift the chain up to the best that I can and uh, I'll just have to deal with that because I'm not replacing this at the time but if you were to do a full service and get rid of this chain how much have I got oh yeah I got a little bit so obviously this is the part that concerns me and it's like anything, it's stainless steel. It all looks good and shiny, but to really know if that was gonna fail, you'd have to actually wash that down, dye test it and all the rest of it. It's going on the age of everything on this boat. I don't really wanna risk it. I will just order, when we get a few more funds, a brand new one. So this is what I was concerned about too. As you can see here, all the wire has started breaking apart there. And this here, is bent. This is a thimble, but it's actually, I noticed that when I was turning the wheel full lock one way, that this was actually coming up to the sprocket here. So whoever installed this didn't center the chain properly. And therefore on a full rotation one way, this actually hits onto the sprocket. What it's actually done is bent the thimble and damaged the wires here. That's the first concern, which is, not good i'm not happy with that at all but like i say just for now just for the sea of cortez until we get a new one and i wouldn't be crossing oceans with this and with anyone crossing an ocean your steering is is uh paramount it's you, you want it to be spot on so that isn't by far just the first bit i've seen of that and i don't like it i am half tempted to even pull that out and just do it while we're here but I'll start on this first to get this sorted, but yeah, I wasn't expecting to see that. Already got frayed wires going on there. It's only a matter of time before pating, you end up rounding up to the wind. So I'm going to... Well, I'm just trying to make a bit of a catchment. Because there's two things in here that I don't want to drop. I could probably find them if I dropped them, but... Uh, so I've got to remove this pin here and it'll come out that side. So if I've got the rag under there now, so if it drops, I can catch it in the rag. And then the other thing, once I've released that, there's actually a, around the brake here, on one side there's just a cotter pin and then on the back side there's actually a washer. So, and the washer on that size is a specific size, so it's not just any washer. So if you lose that, you have to get another washer and I don't want to lose that. So I'll have that under there when I undo the brake. But for starters, we'll punch this out and get started. Okay, so you can see here, there's a huge amount of play there. There should be a washer, uh, maybe, maybe there is, I'm not sure. There should be a washer at the back and a washer at the front, which there is. And once there should be a groove on this washer somewhere. If we use the correct washer, yep, there it is. Talk about that in a second. For now, I'll just get the pin out. You can tell which way the pin is. You can see this is the end you tap in. You can see the little slots around there. This is the thicker end of the pin. And then this side here is where you'll tap it out. And this here is a little mark. It's a V, because there's an actual keyway in here. To get this out, you need to move this washer up to the V and that allows the keyway to come out. You'll see in a second what I mean. Let's just knock that out. Okay, what I 
lose it into my rag or not? No, I didn't lose it. There's slots on it and you can see them from the top and then the bottom has no slots and that's your thin end. So that will go obviously back in that way. Two flathead nuts here, bolts. And careful not to drop these. I do have good access under the engine, but still I'd rather not drop them. So this is the cover plate to our brake. Pedestals, uh, there must be thousands of them out there. And it is something that is really neglected in the maintenance side of things because it's out of sight just like that was how those wires are frayed there and that thimble's bent and who even knows if this is the correct length chain I'll have to look all this up and see what all the measurements are so I can see discoloration on on this too in certain spots pulling out the brake system so on the end of the brake is a cotter pin that is folded over so you should be able to wedge wedge a flathead screwdriver down do the spinning straighten it out roughly straightened out wow so it's definitely been a while since that's been done that just snapped off um, obviously there is a new cotter pin in the kit but uh, I just need to get that out so I need some needle nose pliers that I don't have I don't think. I was going to get the pliers but this can go straight through the end of the cotter pin and uh, that should come out just like that and that is pretty old I'm guessing this hasn't been done for a long time or done ever. Here's your unwind keep winding, unwind and then this should actually come apart. So you just wait until you feel that come apart. So this is one side of the brake pad and I don't have replacement brake pads. Probably should have got pad new pads but still works for now. You can put these in at any time obviously but now this is the next part is a little bit tricky. So there is a washer. There should be a washer but there isn't. There's no washer. So there's not even a washer on there guys, and there should be. Oh well, get that. That washer that I was telling you about that people do drop, obviously it's been dropped and hasn't been replaced. Okay, so that's all out. Got my rag out here. All these parts that are about to drop out, um, I do have the parts for. So what we're gonna do now, if you look in here, this is the washer here. And if you move that to the top, like so, put that on the top, oh, hold that, and spin this around, and there we go, see, you can see a V that's scribed on there, so you line these two up, and this keyway here should all be sort of lined up, and this should come apart, so... There's a washer there and oh there is another washer there they just must be really worn out another needle bearing in the back and the funny thing is there's only two ah uh, there's a bearing missing or oh, I've got the wrong kit so uh, two bearings it has Two washers. Alright, it's getting dark. He's still going. He just removed the old cables. You can see there's wear marks right through to the cable. So we've got brand new cables in now. There's some of the old ones. You can see the wear marks through there. And you can see the steel cable liner. Which means it's also swelling in there because it's rusted scary stuff guys that's going in the bin 
the new ones are in there. Well, what was your tip for putting in the new cables? You left the old ones in and fed them down next to it, yeah? Well, look, every situation's different. I was able to just leave the cables there that were original and just slowly work my way down and sort of the way that they were originally put in and I just followed their path and then I pulled out the old ones. These have even been taped up where they've been worn through. Yeah, just a recipe for disaster. Coming into a marina and you go to put it into reverse and there's no reverse. <laughs> well, you're coming into a marina and you want to slow down and you can't slow down. Scary stuff. Been there guys. Never again. Oh, look, a little bit of story time here. When we had our little Roberts 25, I think it was, our friends got a Roberts 28 or 30, and they were going back to the marina or to their slip after they'd renamed their boat. So I'm assuming they didn't rename their boat properly or do that properly, because there's a little bit of superstition around changing the name of your boat. Now what these guys did is he's he slip, he sort of had to give it a little bit of acceleration to bring the bum around and then go into his slip. So he gave it a little bit of acceleration to bring the bum around and then as he lined up with his slip he backed off and the cable had snapped. And he actually mounted the slip that hard that he was nearly touching the boat on the other side of the um, jetty. So he was a bit embarrassed, as you would be. That's a cable. Never know when they're going to fail. Yeah. Alright, so back to where I, all I really wanted to do was redirect some wires, but look what's happened. Let's get back to it. Okay, so I've put the new keyway in, the new bearings are in here. I've slid down the new rubber with the washer <laughs> and the retainer, and I'm going to slide that in now. So I've just lubed it up and then I've slid my shaft in there. <laughs> Sounds a little bit naughty. You can see there's a bit of wear on one tooth there, and I would say that's from where it keeps rubbing on the wire, which is not good. That's worn on both of those teeth there. And we're gonna, there's the little notch, and that lines up with the keyway here. So slide our first one on. That goes over the keyway like so. Let's see, we've got our, this is the back bit for the brake. Slide that back now. It's a not too there. quick. Uh, assistance there, she could hold that, would be great. Okay, well, it's just moved out. Sometimes it's not always dreamy. Oh, dropping it. So I'll line that up again. Try again. All else fails, try again. Alright, so we've got our V there. Slide that down. Okay. Get our last one. Get that down. Beautiful. Our pins in. So, take that off for now. Get the brake back on. Call it done. And I can get back to running the wires. Right, I'm right. going to leave you now because you've been a delight. But I have to go. <laughs> Do you have anything more riveting to share? No, I'm just going to keep lubing that shaft up and finish off there. And then um, put these brakes back on. So is that the job? You're going to feed the wires. You're going to feed the wires yeah, and then we're going to come back and brakes. show you. Brakes, no good. Yeah, he keeps finding problems. You're bumming everyone out, babe. I was at the shop and the guy's like, he goes, ah, you won't need a new brake. They last forever. Not in this boat, mate. We'll get some new brakes when we get our cable. We will leave you to it, darling. We'll get an update tomorrow. Oh no, tomorrow we're driving to Phoenix. Alright, over the guys, and have dinner. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody.
bright and early. I'm tired. You gotta go to bed because you gotta drive. Yeah, I gotta get this back together. I don't like leaving things apart. Keep it all together while I'm fresh. We are driving to Phoenix thanks to Matt who's lent us his car. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we don't think our credit card has arrived yet, unless it arrives today, which would be great, but I don't think it is. Uh, but we took this opportunity because we couldn't get to Phoenix any other way, so we're just uh, going up to get what is there and what we can collect, because there is quite a few packages at our friend's house, so we thought we would go clear them out and have a drive. But while we were leaving the boat this morning, uh, I fell down the stairs <laughs> and I have twisted my ankle or I've done something to my ankle. I've got ice on it at the moment, but yeah, that was a very unlucky and not helpful for right now. But that's what's happening. We're on our way to Phoenix, driving to the USA. So we're just about to cross back over to Mexico to go back to the boat. We did a whole trip in one day. It's only like seven o'clock. We didn't get the credit card, but we did get food. So, oh, our battens are arriving tomorrow and we missed our ropes by like, what, like 20 minutes? <laughs> but we're already like super close to the border. If we turn around right now, it'd be like, what, four hours to get them? And then the border would be shut, so. It's like very fat it's there. It's very swollen. Right there. It's not too sore. I have been walking on it most of the day. But I will go, when we go back, I'll rest it and put some ice on it. And hopefully it'll be better. Could have been worse. Could have been a lot worse. Lucky. Yeah, I locked the boat and I heard like a plop of like a bag that mum was holding. And I was like, mum, because I was like locking it mid lock. I was like, Mum, and I didn't hear anything. And then I walked to the side of the boat and she was just sitting on the floor. And then I went over and I was like, shoot. And she's like, her ankle. And I'm like, I don't really want to look at it if it's like to the side. So dad was sitting in the car waiting and I was like mouthing to him, Mum fell off the boat. And so, I don't know, he mustn't have like known that I was saying mum fell down the stairs. And so he just like pressed the button and was like slowly winding the window down. And so I was like, mum fell off the boat. <laughs> it gave him a bit of a scare, so he hopped up like super quick. And the whole time he thought that she'd like fallen from the top all the way down the steps. So this morning we were going to Phoenix, we were up early. I put on some shoes, some, I have a pair of Birkenstocks that I don't wear very often. I don't know what it was that made me fall, under there, darling. but I tripped down the stairs this morning and I've hurt my ankle. Okay guys, so the microphone ran out of battery and there's no sound. So I'm going to try and guess what mum said by just reading her lips. Alright, she was talking about her ankle and like how this is like really inconvenient. She's, it's not great, but it's okay because you know what? We went up to Arizona. We got something really exciting. Thank you to Doug and Meg who sent us their old radar, which is super exciting because we really needed one. And so that was like the one of the main reasons that we went up to Arizona. And well, let's open it up and take a look. So this is um, a Rayman. We love Rayman. They're pretty great. Raymarine. Sorry, it's a it's a Raymarine, and it's um it's pretty great. It's a bit hard to open. Oh, I'm not. It's yeah. Okay, it's a little bit of a struggle because I can't move. I'm trying, but uh, okay, well, we'll just leave that for now. But anyway, you get the gist, it's a radar. Oh, okay, I'm gonna try again because I think I got it this time. It's really bubble taped up. Yeah, thank you, sweetie, he, dad's gonna help. Wait, am I being mum or am I being me? I don't know, I'm lost. Okay, it's unwrapped, we got it. It's amazing. It's actually surprisingly pretty light. But look how great that is. Yay, Raymarine. This is amazing. This is great. 
and she's still going on, but I just don't know what about. I know you can see storms coming in little objects in the water and boats and stuff. It's a radar. We just want to say a massive thank you to like everybody who's helped because they've made this possible. Doug and Meg with the Raymarine. There's so many different things that everyone has done. The Amazon wish list, all of our patrons. Like we couldn't be here without you guys. And it's incredible how far we've come and getting Catalpa 2 ready. Catalpa 2 is so ready to go back in the water. Even though not everything is done, she has been pimped out with a lot of nice things. And, well, it's all thank you to you guys, even if you're just liking this video or just watching it. It's so helpful and we just want to say a massive thank you. Okay, I, this is a lot. <laughs> it's too much. I... I'm a person of very few words. This is Chatty Cathy, and she's still rolling. Okay, we are going to go and get an x-ray of my foot because it's still really sore and it's quite swollen, so we just want to rule out that there's any broken bones. Probably not, but... All right, so we're not riding there. I just got chaperoned out to the car, so I didn't have to hobble. But yeah, it's... We're just going to rule out that there's some broken... Nothing's broken, that's all. I don't think it is, because I can like kind of hobble on it. Ah, radiology. Here she is. Good news. It's not broken. So what the piece of paper does say is that it is a Grade two sprain. So I just sprained it, which is good news. I'm gonna go sleep for a couple of days, it'll be fine. Hey, honey. Mm -hmm. Rest, baby. We got nothing to do, do we? Nothing. Sitting here, enjoying the ambience of this beautiful paradise. Okay, I'm gonna go put my feet up. Thanks for watching another spectacular episode in paradise. We'll see you on the next one. We love you guys.